Who else remembers the 80s the way I did? You know, we had the best video games, we had the best movies, and by far, we had the absolute best music out there. But you know what we didn't have back in the 80s? We didn't have the best training methods for scuba divers. Now, I am an old school diver, and I'm kind of an old school instructor, and I was brought up through that old school way of learning, and I think it did help me. I was able to learn a lot of the physics and the physiology way back when, even at a young age, but the actual training methods of how people were taught back then were not the absolute best methods. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the different training methods and how they have changed over the years and why now, here in 2023, why it's just so easy to learn how to scuba dive. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now I've got one of my original open water diver manuals here and I was flipping through it earlier today, uh, just reminiscing about my open water program. But one of the things that I did notice is the information is the same. Nothing has changed, not all the way from the 1980s and to 2023, none of this information has really changed. The physics is still the same. The study of physiology is still the same. The mechanics of the equipment is still the same. Um, even the skills that we learn are the same. Now, there are some skills that are omitted now, say in 2023 versus the 1980s. However, the major skill sets that we learn as divers have not really changed. They're still the same. So why is diving so much safer today if nothing has really changed? And why, why do we teach in a different manner than what we did back then if everything is still the same? Well, it's based off the teaching methodology and it's also based off technological advances that we have today that we didn't have, say, back in the 1980s. And even student manuals. Even though the information's not changed out of them, the manuals themselves have changed. And we're going to look at the difference in the three types of methodology of how we teach students today and why we do omit at certain skills simply based off technological advancements. So when we say methodology, what do we actually mean by that? Well, it's the manner or the method that we use to teach students. And in 2023, we actually have three different methodologies that we use based off how a student learns. And the classes that we're teaching today are more smaller base classes than what they used to be, say, back in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. I can remember teaching a class where we had 20 students in the class. Now, we did a lot of team teaching where we had multiple instructors come in, but I can remember having 20 students in a classroom at one time. Now our higher student counts like four or five at a time, if even that. But we've had to change our methodology based off how many students we have in front of us and based off how those students learn. Now, what are the three different methodologies? Well, we have lecture base. That's where you stand up in front of a classroom and you just teach. We have the prescriptive learning. That's where the students go home, whether they have a digital manual or a hard book manual, and they study the information. They take individual quizzes. And then when they come to class, the only thing the instructor really has to teach them is what they don't really know. And we judge based off what they know or don't know based off their information or the answers that they put in their manual. We can do this on a digital base as well. And then the third uh, type of t methodology that we use, of course, is um, active learning. Now, active learning is kind of unique. You kind of got to have a larger scale classroom to do this, but that's where it's peer-to-peer -peer learning and the students are actually teaching themselves and the instructor's just there to kind of fill in the blanks. And the cool thing about active learning is we give people credit for being smart. I know a lot of great old school instructors, but that's all they are as old school instructors and they can't come across into the new way of teaching simply because they feel like it's more about them than their students. And in today's day and age, people are smart. We've got to give them credit for being smart. They can actually read a manual. They can go online and do their digital training and learn on their own. So the job of teaching has actually more shifted over to the job of just reinforcing what the person already knows or teaching the areas that they, they're not really familiar with. And we judge that, of course, based off what the student does. So as you can see, all three of these methodologies are still good. We kind of combine them to develop our own teaching abilities as instructors. 
So how do I personally teach? Well, I am an old school instructor. I do like the lecture-based classes, but it really depends on the class that I'm teaching. If it's the open water program and it's children that I'm teaching, then I'm an old school lecture-based instructor. I'll stand up there and I'll make sure that the students have the information. If they're a little bit older, then of course, if they can learn on their own, then I'll teach them prescriptively. And of course, if I'm teaching a bigger class, I'll teach the active learning model. And the active learning model is kind of a, it's an acquired taste. It does take a little bit getting used to, but you will find that your students, if you allow them to learn on their own and actually absorb the information, 99% of your students are very smart and they can absorb this information and learn what they need to know to become a diver. Now that we've determined the three different types of methodology and how we teach, let's look at the actual training skills that students are learning today versus what we learned back in the 1980s and why some of them are not as important as what we once thought they were. So the core set of skills that I learned back in the 80s are still being taught today, and I still teach my students the same skills that I learned, but there are a select few skills that we no longer teach. And one of those skills, of course, is buddy breathing. Buddy breathing is an out-of-air emergency drill, and that's where basically we have one second stage that we're sharing back and forth between divers. Now, somebody's going to say, well, why would you ever do that? You've got an alternate second stage that you can donate, or you can switch to it and donate your primary. And yeah, we can. But you got to understand, back in the 70s and even, I would say, the early 80s, we didn't have that. And let me explain what happened. You see, the double-hosed regulator, which was very common, say, in the 50s and 60s, when it switched over to a single-hose regulator, that's all you had was a single hose and a second stage. We really didn't have an alternate second stage. And even into the 80s where it was common to have one, not everybody had one. My grandfather didn't. My father didn't. And even when I learned how to dive, I was taught by my instructor that if you're diving with someone who only has one second stage, you're going to have to learn to breathe off of it during an emergency if you ran out of air. And so as you can see, even during the 80s, even though we had alternate second stages, it was still taught that if you're diving with someone who does not, then of course you're going to have to share air based off that one single second stage. But in 2023, that is not the case. Really in the last 30 or 40 years, that's that's not the case. We all have alternate second stages now. We've learned about alternate redundant systems now. So learning how to buddy breathe is really not as important as what we once thought it was. Now, I'm not going to say that it's not a valuable skill. I'm just going to say that it's not a skill that's really ever been used for me in the last 35 years of my diving. You see, in 35 years, I have donated air to plenty of divers. I've also donated air to plenty of students. I've trained students how to do this, but I've never been in that situation where when I did donate air, that it was a failure and I had to donate this air and switch back and forth. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's not happening, but in today's day and age, we teach students and we teach divers to make sure their gear is in good working order and to make sure they have the appropriate equipment to go out and make the dives that they're making, that the likelihood they find themselves in a situation like that is so slim to none, it's really not even worth teaching that skill anymore. So the last thing we're going to talk about in today's video is the time it takes to actually get certified because it seems like dive shops like to compete with other dive shops or instructors like to compete with other instructors. How fast can I get this student certified? And the reality is, or the truth behind the matter is, we're not competing with each other. Shops do not compete with other shops. Instructors do not compete with other instructors. But what we do compete with in this industry is actually two things. We can be, compete with time and we compete with other industries that do not require a certification to go out and do what it is that we do. So let's talk a little bit about the time it takes to actually get certified. Back when I learned how to dive, it took 16 weeks. It wasn't because the curriculum was set up that way. It was because the shop that I learned how to dive through I actually taught at a local college. And that college said, if you're going to be teaching at our facilities, then you're going to make it a semester long program. So I had to learn through a full semester. And I was a kid back then. This was the 80s when I learned how to dive. And so you can see it took a very long time to learn how to dive. Well, back then, we didn't have the get up and go that we had today. We didn't have the instant gratification of what we've got today. So it wasn't a big deal to take the time to learn this over a lengthy period of time. Now trying to tell somebody that it takes 16 weeks to get certified, they're not even going to get into this sport. They're not even going to grow in this industry because they're going to say, I don't have time for that. I'm going to go off. So we had to change things up a little bit. 
Now, like I said, the core skills did not change, but the way we taught change and the way that we produced programs also change. In my open water program, we learned more than just open water skills. We learned first aid skills. We learned rescue diver skills. We weren't uh, wreck diver skills. We learned navigation-based skills. There were a lot of classes that you take today, a lot of specialty classes that were actually built into the open water program that's been omitted. And somebody's going to say, but those are important skills, Brian. Shouldn't we still be learning them? Yes, you should, but you shouldn't be learning them strictly in the open water program. That's why we have specialty-based programs. Back when I walked away from my open water program, I walked away with multiple specialties at the same time. Now, when once again, you got to understand, we didn't have other things going on in our life that was so pressing on time so we could focus on that class over a lengthy period of time. Nowadays, students simply cannot do that. And unfortunately, people are plagued with instant gratification nowadays, and they simply don't have the time to learn what it is they need to know. So we've broken up the classes over the years to smaller specialty-based courses, and those skill sets are really pulled out of the open water program, which actually shortens how long it takes you to get certified. So whether you're doing a two-week course, a four or five-day course, or a two-day course, it's really based off the instructor and the shop that you're learning through and what other programs they can offer you over a lengthy period of time. Me personally, I teach like a four-day open water program and I feel like my students learn exactly what it is they need to know for the open water program. If they want to learn more, then we bring them back in for specialty courses and they learn that. I really don't see the benefit in taking a, say, a two-week, three-week, four-week, or in my case, a 16-week open water program. Now, the two-day programs, it really depends on the individual student. I personally don't like teaching a two-day program, but there are people out there that are smart enough and they can pick these skills up just like this, and there's really not a reason that they can't do a two-day program. So instructors, you need to make sure that you're talking to your students about their learning capabilities, what methodology is going to be best to teach them, and students, you need to be talking to your instructor to find out how he or she actually teaches these courses so that you can find the right instructor for you. So as you can see, guys, diver training's really not changed. Yeah, we've omitted certain skills and we've shortened classes based off how the curriculum has changed slightly over the years, but we're still learning the same basic physics, the same basic physiology. Uh, we're still learning the same basic equipment mechanics as what we learned back then, but through technological advancements, we're able to fast track certain parts of the program. And because we're taking more of the specialty areas out of the open water program and putting more emphasis on those specialties diver training has become very efficient it's very safe to do but i'd like to know from you guys what can we do to make it even more efficient and even more safe for divers as well if you feel like we should add skills back into the program let me know down below your thoughts in the matter and why do you use those skills on a day in day out basis have you found yourself into a situation where that skill would really be beneficial say here in 2023 but i really want to hear from you guys what are your personal thoughts in the matter guys i really hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give me a big thumbs up definitely share it as well i'm gonna go ahead and sign off for today if there is something specific you want to see in the future let me know down below and i'll try to get you a video made but until then guys take care god bless and i will see you in the next video